Hey guys, welcome back to this session. And in this session, we'll talk about file and database handling in COBOL. So let's get started. A typical modern application may not use files frequently, but it might use database to store and retrieve data. It makes sense since many applications do not typically handle data processing. This goes back to the early days when businesses want to find a way to replace the tedious approaches of using ledgers or any other business-oriented activity that requires human intervention. And during that time frame, the mainframe and COBOL were seen as a way to automate the back office. In fact, COBOL is an excellent language for handling data files because it is able to handle them clearly, accurately, and quickly. The majority of enterprise applications rely on files and relational databases such as DB2. In general, there are different set of files which is used by enterprise application. And this category include index file, sequential file, or relative files. Apart from that, you have generation data groups, which is generally used for backups. Now let me precisely give an overview of a file and a database. So first of all, a file is made up of individual records. A record is a collection of individual fields or data items and the format or the format of records in the file are defined in your COBOL program. On the other hand, a relational database management system or RDBMS is a common type of database that store data in tables. So it can be used in relation to other stored data sets. Now let's talk about various operations that you perform on data which is stored either in file or in a database. So the first operation is read and in this case, you actually access data from the file or from the database. The next one is write and in this case, you actually write data either to a file or to a database. The next one is update operation and in this case, you access data from the storage medium, make some changes and then again store that data back to the storage medium and the storage medium can be a file or a database. And the last operation is delete and in this case, you actually delete or remove the data from a file or from the database. And remember, if you want to perform these operations on a data which is stored in a file, then you have to use native COBOL commands such as read, write, rewrite, or delete. And if you want to perform the same operation with the data that is stored in a DB2 table or a database, then you have to use the SQL statements such as select, insert, update, or delete. Now let's move on to our next section. And in this section, I will demonstrate how COBOL program interact with files and databases. And in total, we're going to discuss four different examples. First one is a simple COBOL program that is dealing with a file. Then we have a COBOL DB2 program, which is dealing with a DB2 database. Thereafter, we have a COBOL kicks program, which is again dealing with a file. And last one is a COBOL IMS program, which is dealing with an IMS database. And after going through all these four examples, you can clearly understand what is the structure of the program and how exactly these programs are designed and used within these different ecosystems. So let's get started now. So in the following example, we have a sample COBOL program that is dealing with a sequential file. And if you notice, there are four different divisions. First one is identification division. Then we have environment division. Thereafter, we have data division. And the last one is a procedure division. So this program is actually reading data from the file. And if you look at the structure of the program, you'll clearly notice that the file details, that means the file that you want to read in your program is specified in file control section, which is a part of environment division. And in file control section, you specify the name of the file that you'll be using within your COBOL program. Apart from that, you specify the corresponding DD name that will be used in the JCL. After that, you have data division where you have file section. There you'd specify the actual layout of the file that includes the name of the field and the length of those corresponding fields. Then you have working storage section, which is generally used to specify the variables that you'll be using in your COBOL program. After that, we have procedure division, which is used to specify the business logic. And if you notice the procedure division, we have a paragraph that is a triple zero hyphen core hyphen processing. And the file that we have specified in our file control section and the layout that we have specified in data division is processed in this particular section or division. 
and what we have done is to open a file we have used the open statement right after that to read a data from the file we have used a read statement and finally we have used the close statement to close the file that we have opened before issuing a read command and the last statement is stop run which will terminate the processing of a COBOL program now the question is that you have created your program you have compiled it now how to execute that program on mainframe so for that you need a JCL the term JCL stands for job control language and it is a command language of the ZOS operating system and it is generally used to specify the program and the corresponding files or the output data set where your output will be stored and if you want to learn more about JCL then you can check out our course on different platforms now coming back to the sample JCL so first two line is basically a job card and after that we have specified the description about the job and the step and if you look at the step 10 which is actually specifying the program that you want to execute with the help of this JCL and thereafter we have specified the DD name that we have actually used in our COBOL program so this is how you can use a JCL to execute or run your COBOL program on mainframe. Now let's move on to our next example which is a COBOL kicks program and this program is also reading data from a file. So the program is again divided into four different division that is identification division, environment division, data division and procedure division. The first thing you should notice is that the environment division does not include any entries and the data division does not include a file section. That is because the file that we are using in our COBOL kicks program is defined in the kicks file control table that is FCT. Because the file control table keep a track of the characteristics of the file and you do not have to code the select or FT statements in your COBOL program. But in case if you are using the sort statement in your COBOL kicks program then you are required to specify the file details in the environment division and in the data division. The next two important section is working storage section and linkage section and these sections are actually used to define variables which will be used internally within the program. To use the communication area you need to provide two definition for it in your program. One is in the working storage section and the other one in the linkage section. The working storage definition in this program is named as communication area and the linkage section definition is named as TFHCOM area. Although you can use any name for the working storage field, but you must use DFHCOM area for the linkage section field. Now, if you notice the procedure division, which is generally used to specify your business logic, we have not used the native COBOL read statement, write statement, open or close statement. Because if you are writing a COBOL kicks program, then you have to deal with kicks command you have to issue kicks command from your COBOL program to perform various operations that you want to perform in your COBOL kicks program you must use kicks command for most of the input and output processing therefore do not describe file or code any open close read rewrite write or delete statement instead use kicks command to retrieve update insert and delete data so in this example, we have a paragraph that is a triple zero hyphen core hyphen processing. Thereafter, we have a perform statement to execute a paragraph that is one four double zero hyphen send hyphen customer map. And after that, we have a small snippet of a kicks command, which is actually reading data from the file. And if you notice, we have exec CICS and end CICS. And within that, we have issued the read statement to read data from the file. Now, if you want to run your COBOL kicks program, then you cannot do it directly with the help of a JCL because under kicks environment, a user cannot directly invoke a program. Instead, the user invoke a transaction, which in turn specify the application program to be executed. When a user invoke a transaction, kicks locate the application program associated with that particular transaction. Every transaction must be defined in a special kicks table that is program control table or PCT it actually include a list of valid transaction identifier and each identifier is paired with a kicks program that will be loaded and executed when a transaction is invoked by the user another important kicks table is called process program table or PPT and it contains a list of valid program names 
This table keeps track of which programs are located in storage. And the last table is FCT, that is File Control Table, and it is used to keep a track of files which is available to your application program. Apart from that, you also have a couple of additional tables which is used to define various resources as per your requirement. So these tables that we have discussed till now in this particular example is just for explanation purpose, how exactly COBOL Kicks program is designed and how you can execute your program in Kicks environment. Now let's move on to our next example that is a COBOL DB2 program. And in this case, we are actually reading data from a DB2 table instead of a file. So again, we have four different division that is identification division, environment division, data division and procedure division. So if you notice in environment division and data division, we have not specified any file related details because we are actually reading data from a DB2 table. In case if you want to write any data to the output file, then you have to specify the file related details in the environment division and in the data division. Then we have working storage section where we have specified the working storage variables that will be used internally within the program. And thereafter we have a procedure division where we have specified our business logic. And again, we have not used any open statement, close statement because we are not dealing with file. We are actually using the DB2 database. And to perform any data related operation, for example, reading, writing, updating or deleting data from the table, then you have to use the SQL statements. And these SQL statements must be used within the exec SQL and end SQL notations. So you cannot use COBOL native read statements to read data from the table. Now, if you want to execute a COBOL DB2 batch program, then you have to use a JCL. So in this case, our program is a batch program. So we are using a JCL. So in case if you want to execute your COBOL kicks and DB2 program, that is an online program. So in that case, you have to specify all these entries in the corresponding table that we have discussed in our previous example. And then you have to initiate a transaction that will in turn execute your program. Now coming back to our sample JCL, that is JCL EMP03, we have a job card, then we have description, and after that we have step 10, which is actually executing a utility, that is IKJEFT01. And it is generally used to execute a COBOL DB2 program. And if you look at the sysin, you notice that we have specified the program name, followed by the plan and the library. So this is how you can execute your COBOL DB2 batch programs. Now let's talk about our last example that is COBOL IMS program. And let's try to understand how you can specify the different file entries in your COBOL IMS program. So in this case, again, we have four different division that is identification division, environment division, data division, and the last one is procedure division. And we are not required to specify any file related details in environment division and data division because here in this particular program, we are actually dealing with IMS database and it is a hierarchical database. DLI act as an interface between an application program and the access method. To perform an operation on a DLI database, a program does not issue a standard COBOL file input output statements, for example, read, write, open or close, but it execute a call statement to invoke DLI. The parameters passed by the call statement tell DLI what operations are to be performed. Then DLI invoke the access method. So in the working storage section, we have defined the DLI functions. Apart from that, we have also defined the segment input output area. Apart from that, you normally define the working storage variables that will be used internally within the program. Then we have linkage section where we have defined the PCBs which will be used in the program. The linkage section definition of a PCB is called a PCB mask. Now, coming back to the procedure division, we have actually used the procedure division with a using clause. And the using clause lists the name of the PCB mask that you have defined in the linkage section. Now, in the paragraph A000-core-processing, we have actually used the call statement to request DLI services. The parameters you code on the call statement specify the operation you want DLI to perform. 
In the following call statement, I've actually used a function variable that is DLI hyphen GN. And this particular variable actually denote a function that is get next. And you can use it to retrieve segment occurrence in a sequence. It is like a standard COBOL read statement. Now to execute your COBOL IMS batch program, you need a JSR. And remember, you cannot directly invoke a COBOL IMS program with the help of a JCL because you need an IMS interface. That means your program is invoked under the control of DLI batch initialization module. Then DLI first load the appropriate control block and modules, then load your application program. And finally, it'll transfer control to your application program. Now, if you notice our JCL, we have used a specific program or utility that is DFSRRC00. Now, there are four different parameters that we have specified with the PAM option. So, the first one is program type, and in that I've specified DLI. Then we have program name, where I've specified the program name. After that, we have PSP name, where I've specified the PSP name. And last, you have the checkpoint ID. In case if you have a restarting process, then probably you can specify the checkpoint ID. So in our case, I've not specified uh, any checkpoint ID. So this is how you can design your COBOL program to interact with a file or a database depending on your business requirement. So, so far, if you have any question, then do let me know. Otherwise, let's move on to our next lecture. So far, we have discussed the fundamental aspect of COBOL programming. If you're looking to enhance your understanding of advanced topics such as COBOL file handling capabilities that include read, write or delete data from a sequential file or from a VSAM file. Apart from that, we also discuss how to use JSON generate statement or XML generate statement to generate the XML or JSON messages from your COBOL program. And on the other hand, how you can process these messages in your COBOL program. We've also discussed the arithmetic operations in detail and how you can use them in your COBOL program. Apart from that, we have also showcased how to use the COBOL compilation process that include COBOL kicks compilation process and COBOL DB2 compilation process. On top of that, we have also included mock interviews and quizzes. Apart from that, you can also try our JCL complete reference course. And with the help of this course, you can learn how to write and execute JCL on the IBM mainframe. Apart from that, you can also use these JCLs to execute your COBOL program. And in our COBOL complete reference course, we have provided the COBOL programs and sample JCLs so that you can execute them on the mainframe environment. Last but not the least, if you like this video, then hit the like button and share your feedback in the comment section. And do share it with your friends and please consider subscribing to our channel because your subscription is very important for us. Thank you so much for watching the video.